This handcrafted model depicts the city of Jerusalem caught in a moment in time. It echoes the sounds of ancient pilgrims, conquerors, and diverse cultures, and offers a vivid glimpse into Jerusalem's past, just before it grew into the bustling metropolis we recognize today. Created in 1873 by Stefan Illis, a Hungarian Christian pilgrim to the city, it offers a journey to the past. But behind the exhibit lies a mystery, and the story is almost as captivating as the model itself. Our story begins with this map at the Laor Collection at the Israel National Library. There was a pretty strange map of Jerusalem. It was drawn from the southwest corner, a place which is impossible. No one can stand in this place and see the city. Question to the students was, what is the date of the map? One of the students, an MA student, Moti Yair, Zichrono Livracha, he asked me to write the paper course on this map. I said, why? He said, look, I uh, immigrated from Hungary, and Ilesh is a very typical Hungarian name. Perhaps I can do something with my uh, Hungarian background and family. He came to the conclusion that the model was on the exhibition in 1873, Vienna. Later, Ilesh took the model through many important towns and cities, and he lost his tracks in Geneva. I met Moti Yair in March 84, and this is really an incredible coincidence. I was sitting at the cafeteria of the Hebrew U, having a coffee with my friends, and I was just chatting with them and telling them that I would uh, go to Switzerland. Moti Ayer was sitting behind me. I didn't know who he was. Uh, he heard me saying that I was going to Switzerland, and he asked to talk to me. He asked me, uh, do I know the model? Have I seen the model? I said, never in my life. He told me I had to meet Professor Ben Arier from the Department of Geography uh, because he wanted uh, me to look for it. So I went to Professor Ben Arier and he wrote for me a letter and that I should have all the facilities to make research in Geneva. She asked her father, he, he was her father, but he was Mr. David Littman, who is uh, uh, very interested, deeply interested in, in history and involved in the community in Geneva and in Israel, a, a great friend of Teddy Kolek. And he knew the right peoples to ask. I said to my dad, we have to find this model. I didn't even know the size of it. I had no clue, nothing. There was no picture. And then he said, you know what, come with me. I have an appointment at the Bibliothèque uh, in Geneva, the library. Let's see, let's start to ask. So we went to meet this person in Geneva at the library. And the guy seemed to remember that he had seen a, a paper saying that there was this a model. And then we were told that they had managed to find the model in the Palais Wilson in front of the Lake of Geneva. When we went up the stairs to the attic, someone opened this closed door and then we saw eight sections vertically standing and on it was Jerusalem. So you had to look at it like this, to look at it like this, to see all the houses and the valleys and the mountains. So it was just extraordinary. It was really incredible. And I recall a specific moment where it was full of dust. So I took a tissue and I started cleaning out all the dust to see the colors coming out and it was it was incredible. I was so happy and my parents, my father, 
we were all extremely thrilled to have found this model. I went back to Israel. I met Professor Ben Arieh, Marty Yair, and I told them, well, it's in Geneva. Wow, so what do we do? Marty called me and said, they found it. I asked, they found who? And he said, what do you mean? They found the model in Geneva. David Littman took action. He discovered that the model was bought in 1878 by donors to the Maison de la Reformation in Geneva. Since the First World War, it had been boxed and stored in the attic. Mayor of Jerusalem, Teddy Kollek, authorized Littman to represent the city. After six months of negotiations, Littman convinced the authorities to allow the Tower of David to display the model as a gift on permanent loan from the city of Geneva to the city of Jerusalem. The model was created, packed up, and flown to Jerusalem on El Al. One day, from El Al, they call me and they say to me, you have here about, I don't know, 250 tons. What? What are you bringing to me? No, no, we have here six uh, cases, enormous, and we are bringing them to you. I don't know where to put them. But Teddy says, no, we will open it. Say, so you are crazy? Open? It's winter. It's raining. We opened the case and there was nothing. You see, the topography that you see, that there is nothing, only some olive trees, this is what we found. Say, so let's open another one. And then we open another case and suddenly we found this part, the Holy Sepulchre with all the buildings and everything. Ah, that is another story. It was a great wow in the courtyard. This was the, the moment that the model became an important exhibit of the museum. In 2023, the museum was renovated and a special gallery was dedicated to the model. 150 years after leaving home, the model is one of the most popular exhibits at the Tower of David Jerusalem Museum. The meeting with Moti Yair was very special when I recall this, so many years later. We were both students, something brought us together, and I'm very, very sad that today Moti can't see the model here because he died very young. It's like a story within a story within a story. There are sad, sad parts, but there are beautiful parts that he was one of the person who helped discover the model. The mystery was solved and the model returned to Jerusalem. But as in all good stories, the ending is never final. The saga of Stefan Illis continues. He built two more models of Jerusalem, but both have mysteriously vanished. Perhaps they are also concealed in the shadows of an abandoned attic, patiently waiting to be rediscovered to find the way back to Jerusalem.